So a few people have asked me about using the RATC model for fitting water retention curves and for other hydraulic properties of soils. Probably a lot of you saw the, the, the worksheet video where we use Excel or, or Open Office or LibreOffice to, to fit water retention curves. One of the advantages of using RATC is that it's really easy to use you you just have to put your data into the program, input your data into the program, and you just use press a few buttons and you have the feedings of your or your water retention curve. One of the disadvantages is that it does not run in all computers. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that with you. And you have to understand a little bit about the statistics and the hydraulic functions to understand how the program works. So first of all, uh, it runs in Windows. Um, I, I got a hold of a, a computer with Windows here, so I'm gonna use it to show you how this this program, how to install and how to download this program. So originally, this is an old model from the United States Department of Agri Agriculture. It used to be the Soil Salinity Lab, so it's still in the Soil Salinity Lab uh, page here. And uh, it's an old code it used to run on DOS, the version, the Microsoft operational system before Windows. And you have versions here that run in DOS and Windows. One of the things here is that those versions that you're going to find on the USDA website, they will not work in latest Windows versions. I have tested in Windows 10 with the latest upload update and uh, it will not work. If you have a very old computer which is unlikely running DOS, you can download it from here. Or if you have Windows 7, 8 or Vista or something like that, you can download the, 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 the Windows version from here. You just have to fill a quick form here and then it will take you to the download area. So if you have an older computer, you can download directly from here. If not, you can download the, the program from PC Progress. So I, I believe that one of the programmers that worked in this, those original hydraulic code is from the, US, the USDA Department of, Agri the Department of Agri Agriculture Soil Salinity Lab. He went to work with this company here, PC Progress. So the PC Progress is a private company, but it still offers versions of the those hydraulic programs here, those hydrology programs here for free download. So there are several here: Hydrus, Redk, uh, and a few, a, couple, a few others here. So uh, you can go to the downloads here. So you can read it here if you want to the details. But go to the downloads here, and then you choose which version you want to download. I recommend you download it the most recent, which is not very recent, but it's the most recent you have from 2009, which should work on, on Windows 10, the latest update. So just click here. It will take you to the downloads page. You just fill this form here. You might have to create an account. I had an old account when I was in, in graduate school. I have to I had to download those programs and I had to talk with them. So I had an old account and I downloaded the the, the executable uh, uh, file from here. So I downloaded to the downloads folder and you just have to click here. I think it's this version. This is the old version, I believe, from the US Salinity Lab, which doesn't work in Windows. And this is the version that works in Windows from the PC Progress component. So this, when you click in this execu executable file here, it will extract to a folder. You go to the folder and you click on setup.exe. This setup.exe, it runs really fast and then it installs the program in your system. It automatically created here a, a a link into my desktop. So all you have to do is click here and you take you to the program. So it's a pretty much an old school program. If I'm not mistaken, this interface here is programmed in C++ or Visual C++. But the code itself, if I'm not mistaken, it calls some 
old Fortran libraries that does the, the fitting, the, the nonlinear regression. So a lot of the programs that you use today for fitting nonlinear programs in hydrology, in numerical models, they call old Fortran libraries or C, C++ libraries, but most likely old Fortran lab libraries that were devel developed in the 60s, 70s, and 80s by major research institutes and laboratories for feeding nonlinear problems. So let's create a new file here. Name of the project, I'm gonna call this here example. Description, you don't need a description, so example here is fine, okay. So let's go to this list here. Just start at the first item, type of problem. What do you wanna do? You wanna do, you wanna fit Retention, flutter retention data, and conductivity diffusivity data. You're going to choose this if you have conductivity diffusivity data as well. So you, you need conductivity diffusivity experiments in addition to the retention, water retention data. So this is more difficult to get. This data is more difficult to get, but you might need it. You might need to have the data and need to use it. You can fit retention data only, only the water retention curve. This is probably what most of you are looking, just fitting the water retention curve. You can fit the conductivity diffusivity data only without the water retention curve. So this is what is called inverse modeling. You have the data and you want to fit the equations or the models to the data and get the, per the parameters to the, to the model and get the, the fitting parameters. You might want to do a forward problem where you have the value of the, the parameters and you just want to simulate the, the, the curve. So in this case here you need to, to start by having the, the parameters for the equations or the curves. So not a lot of people need this but occasionally occasionally you, you, you need this. If you want to fit points of a curve, for example the interval between uh, field capacity and wilting point to, or a few data points here or the entire core curve or interval between field capacity and uh, wilting point for example if you need data points so what you're going to do here now is fit the water retention curve only which is similar to what i showed you in the excel worksheet video or the the, uh, the libreoffice worksheet video so let's click next here you need to choose the units, length units, millimeters, centimeters, or meter. I use centimeters because you can use centimeters of water column for pressure units for your curves, which is equivalent to a hectopascal. It's not exactly the same, but you can check the conversion factors. Number of iterations, this is the, for the search procedure how many iterations usually it, it this is for convergence i'll talk a little bit that about that in other videos but usually if the data is good you don't need a lot of, a lot of iterations but you can choose this for 100 500 how many you want if you don't if you're not really sure about the static starting parameters units of time this is needed for other hydraulic properties like infiltration or or other types of simulations, but let's leave it in days here. We're, we're not going to need it for the initially. We're not going to need it for water retention fit. So let's give the get leave the length units in centimeters and the time units in days. Next, what model you want to fit? I I showed you guys earlier the Van Gennucken equation with the Mualem restriction m equals one minus one over n. So you have other modules here that you want to fit. You have the Van Genuchten with varying m and n, n with the Mualen con conductivity model. You have the Van Genuchten with variable m and n with the Bourdini conductivity, mo conductivity model. You have the Van Genuchten with the Mualen restriction, m equals m1 minus 1 over n, with the Bourdini restriction, 1 minus 2 over n. I usually fit with the Wallen restriction, which is because it's more, the most usual, usually used, and because it reduces the number of parameters to from, from I believe five to four 
because you remove the m parameters here. You can fit the Brooks and Corey equation. I have a, a video showing you how to fit the Brooks and Corey equation in Python. Uh, the Brooks and Corey equation is a segmented model, so it's not really that easy to fit it when in worksheets alone, but it's possible. You have the log normal distribution model. I don't, I, I don't know, I don't believe it's the Kozugi model, but the Kozugi model is this, the models of the, this nature. And you have the dual porosity model. You have two peaks of porosity, which is, you can find that in certain types of soils, like a few oxy soils from the tropics, you find this type of porosity. So let's fit the traditional Vanginuktin with the Mualim restriction. I'm not going to get into details in the derivations of the mualim bourdin models. Uh, I have some material about that, but it's for a course that it's currently not open to the public. I might open that to the public later. So here in this menu where you're defining the, the type of water retention conductivity model, sometimes when you start the program, it already have something stored here, some number of data points, but we need to, to indicate the number of data points. I'm going to use here the same data that I used the, for the Excel water retention curve model. So here we have 14 pairs of points of water content and water potential. So I'm going to put here 14 for metric potential. I'm going to put next here. So the next step is to choose the initial parameters for fitting the nonlinear regression model. I talked a little bit about this for the Excel or LibreOffice worksheets video, but because we chose the, the, the Mualen restriction, we don't have to fit the M parameter. You are only gonna have to fit the theta R, the residual order content, the saturated order content, the alpha parameter, and the N parameter. The saturated hydraulic conductivity here is not fitted, but it's for modeling purposes. The idea is that you have these values uh, from laboratory data, from lab data. So this can be used to estimate hydraulic parameters from the soil. So we're gonna fit, fit all of these parameters. If you don't wanna fit a particular parameter, let's say for example that you have the saturated water content from total porosity, you just uncheck here, and this value will not change due, during, the, during the fitting procedure. You have to choose initial values which are close enough to the best fit, fitting parameters such that the, the surface does not disperse. I show you that on the Excel video. So you need this red line. You can model this using Excel without the, the regression here, without the nonlinear regression here, just to see parameters here that are gonna be close enough to the, to the data points. So let's say, for example, that the initial parameters here is 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.01, 2, so this curve is close to the initial data. If I put something here, like for example, one, you see that it's not close at all. And in this condition, it, it, there's a uh, great risk that the surface will disperse. The, the nonlinear regression parameter surface of, search, of the search procedure will disperse and you, you, it will not converge. The procedure will not converge and we will not have a result. So let's leave it two here. Oh, better, 0.01 here. And let's use these values here for the initial parameters. You can choose an initial estimate based on the soil texture. You can put clay here, for example. But, but this by not really, really realistic for the soils from the tropics, for example, acidic soils. But, but let's, let's leave here, this here and see what happens. You can use neural network prediction for the initial values from for, from sand, sealed clay, and bulk density, for example, from textural classes. So this is this opens the Rosetta module, which is neural networks. It's what people today knows as artificial intelligence or something like that. That there's difference, but for the for the purposes of this video, let's consider it a form of artificial intelligence. Let's click next. What you want to do here is just go to the get your data from Excel or from other worksheet, from LibreOffice or other worksheet. Let's copy here, Control C. 
put here the first cell and control V. So this is the pressure data and the theta data. Pressure here is in hectopascal, which is a, approximately, it's, you can approximate to centimeters of water column. It's not exactly the same, but you can consult the, the conversion in the internet. I'm not going to convert exactly here because this is just for an example, but do check that if you need to use data that is in hectopascal, for example. So you can give weights here. You can give more heavier weights to, to certain points. If you're not really confident in certain points, you can give different weights for, for example, points near the wet range or, or points near the dry range and the the fitting will be more influenced by points where you give the, the greatest weights. Let's leave zero here or no, no difference in weights for all the data points. Let's click next. It's, it asks you if you want to save the input before executing rec. You don't have much of an option, so let's get, click OK here. Do you want to run the rec application? OK. So this that opens here, it, it called a, a Fortran module, and this is the, the, the result from the Fortran running. So press enter to continue, and then the results are printed here. This is the graph you can choose here in log units, pressure head, or which is the, essentially similar to the, the idea of the metric potential, or in uh, in linear units or in log units. So this is your curve. This is hydraulic cap capacity function. This is hydraulic conductivity functions, all estimated from the the uh, water retention curve. You don't, you're not seeing points here because we did not choose fit the hydraulic conductive function, function as well. You can get those data along with the water retention curve or just this data, but the the hydraulic conductivity curve, it's much more difficult to obtain than the in lab in laboratory, than the water retention curve. So, so uh, effective water content, pressure head, so you have diffusivity, you have a lot of, of other hydraulic properties here, but they're all simulated from the, 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 the water retention curve. We don't have data for this, so Take it, take that with a grain of salt. What you have data for here is the water retention curve. So this is the output here for the the fitting. You can hear, he, he see here the initial water hydraulic parameters: the theta r, theta s, alpha. The index one here means that those were fitted. So they they vary during the the fitting procedure to to, to get to optimum values. And M and KS here, saturated hydraulic conductivity, were given values, so they're not fitted. So this is the observed data. It's the exact data that we, we, we inputted in the program. This is the weighing coefficients. It's one or equal. I don't know if I said zero before, but the point here is that it's equal weights in all points. This is the number of iterations for the search procedure. This is the sum of squared of the residuals between observed and, and, and simulated, what the procedure do, does is minimize the sum of sums of squares of the residuals. So you see it here that at some point this is constant. This means that the, the procedure has converged to optimal, optimum values. And these are the values that you reached uh, after conversion, after the, the, there is no further decrease with sums of squares of the residuals after iteration. So this is what you're looking for. So this indicates that to us the graphs here and this indicates to us that there was conversion of the convergence of the procedure after 17 iterations. This is the correlation matrix between the parameters or the parameters. This is for statistics, sometimes you don't want them to be highly correlated, but in water retention curves you can't control that. They are going to be most likely severely correlated. This is the pseudo R, pseudo R squared, 0 
beware of high values of uh, R squared in nonlinear regression. Those values are usually inflated, so even if you don't have a very good fit, the R squared is going to be high. So, so don't completely trust the R squared values. You need to check for convergence and you need to, to look at your data. So this here is the, the, the fit, the, the final results of the fitting. The, here, is, here are your variables, they're fitted, theta r, residual r, water content, saturated water content, alpha and n. This is the value, the fitting value. So we have 0 0.2, 0 0.233 for theta r, 0.50 for theta r, s, 0.01 for alpha and 1.86 for n. This is the standard error or the error associated with these values, but in general what you, you're looking for is this. So this is the error associated. If you can plot this error if you want as well. This is the t-value, the t-test for the significance or the t-value for the significance of, of those coefficients. And this is the confidence interval. So the confidence interval, the lower bound and the upper bound. The idea is that there's no zero in this interval here, meaning that the you can some people interpret that interpret that as the coefficient is statistically different from zero and that's what you're looking for so this is the observed and fitted data so this is the pressure the pressure head the log pressure head the water content observed and the water content fit and the deviations this is the hydraulic properties, conductivity, diffusivity. Like I told you before, this is simulated data from the water retention curve. So be careful using this kind of data because you don't have real estimates, only simulations from the water retention curve, difference from the water retention curve itself, which you have data. If you want to plot yourself, what you need to do is you need to use this data here. What you can do to plot this, I'm not going to show you all the procedure here, but you can get this data here, copy. If you're using Windows, obviously, you can open here a notepad. You can paste it here, and you can save this here, either as txt or the DAT file. I'm going to save it here for as txt. So save as I'm going to call here this here water retention curve dot txt save it and you can uh let me just get this here documents you can import this here in excel or in python or in r or any sigma plot origin in any uh plotting program that you that you want. So you're going to plot the pressure, pressure versus the observed water content and the fitted water content. Because I don't have Excel installed in this, this computer, only online, I'm not going to do this right now, but it's pretty easy. You just put this data here, just get this data here. And like we had in the Excel worksheet, just put it here and do the, a plot like this. So, or in any other program. So it's not difficult. You just need to understand a little bit about what you're doing and interpreting these parameters is more powerful than the the Excel worksheet because the algorithms used, the numerical procedure for, for fitting this are much more powerful. And it, it might be easier to use for, for a lot of people if you're just not interested in fitting procedure itself. Or if you're just using for a course, for a class that you're taking, you might want to use RETC because it's easier, simpler, and more accurate than the Excel or LibreOffice alternatives.